What is going on, everybody? Bailey, I, Brett, from the Serious Angler Podcast. Uh, I stole my dad's truck. We're headed to Sports' Warehouse down the road to uh, pick up a couple things for the first derb here uh, on Saturday, Honeyway Lake. Uh, we got a little cold front rolling through. If you guys can see out my window, we, uh, we got some snow. We went from 60s, 70s every day to, uh, to freaking snow. Snowstorm today, but it'll be all gone tomorrow it's not even sticking to the road sticking to trees and all that crap but it ain't sticking to the road so it's gonna be gone probably overnight um but yeah we're on the way to we have our first nykbf uh kayak tournament on honey oil this saturday uh five longest fish wins and i'm going to pick up a couple things to make sure i'm stocked up i would be driving my car but my car is in the garage in shambles just trying to get reorganized for this weekend uh get everything in order but uh, I want to do a little introduction because in two days, obviously, we'll be headed to uh, Hanoi. We're going to get out there for tournament day. I plan to record the entire thing, so hopefully you guys can see either how bad it goes or hopefully we'll do well. We went out and practiced and uh, got on some really good patterns fishing offshore rock piles. And I think with this cold front here today, uh, I think that that should only help me. I think if anything, if there's fish moving up shallow, which I found a few up shallow, uh, nothing of size. Granted that honey oil, like this lake is like chock full of pound and a half to two pounders. If you catch like a three or a four, you're doing really good. Um, so I think if anything, it's going to push any fish that was moving shallow back out deeper. Uh, so just in time for Saturday, um, I think it'll have me sitting pretty because it's going to be kind of cold the next two days as well. But it's going to be a warming trend starting Saturday, going to get into the 60s again. Um, I think that's really going to help me out. But then again, I'm wrong a good amount of time. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, either way, I'm excited. It's the first tournament of the year, first kayak tournament, get things, in the, get back into the swing of things. Hopefully we can get on some fish. Uh, I caught a, a honey oil 10 pounder <laughs> thing was four and a half pounds, uh, 18 and a half, 19 inches. Uh, hopefully we can run into those. I basically left anything. I, I spent a lot of time graphing and uh, found some stuff and basically just I didn't have to make more than three casts to get two bites on each pile. And basically, as soon as I'd get two bites off each one, I'd leave. Um, all I'm doing really is just throwing a football jig. You guys will see it on Saturday. Hopefully, we get bit on it. Hopefully, all goes well. And uh, we'll see you guys on Saturday morning uh, when we honor, obviously, on our way to the tournament and get all situated. And I'll talk to you guys then. All right, guys, it is tournament morning. It is currently 6 a.m. Uh, first cast is 6.30 a.m. Uh, last cast, 2.30. So we have a good eight hours to try and figure some stuff out here. We got a, we got a little dialed in practice, and uh, we're gonna hope some bigs come out to play like they did in practice, barely touch my spots here. Um, basically, a lot of graphing. What I'm doing is I'm sticking pretty much offshore all day long. Um, hitting some offshore rock piles and basically what I did is spent a lot of time graphing got about seven or eight different spots and uh, basically made two or three casts on each spot and got fit each time so hoping that stays true to today and uh, we keep getting on some fish I think it's just gonna be weeding through some small fish today to try to get those 16 to 18 inches I think you know if I have a limit of 16 and I can get a 17 or 18 even a 19 we got a good shot at winning but then again it is this is honey oil. <laughs> this lake does not like me basically it's it's chock full of uh, a lot of cookie cutters so i think whoever can get themselves on some bigger fish is going to do pretty well we might crash and burn but uh hopefully we don't hopefully plan comes to fruition but we'll hopefully get a win it's at least a grand for first place guaranteed so that would be nice but let's get after it I'm still waiting for Forrest. I cooked Forrest this morning. You'll probably see him a little bit today. Uh, we're kind of starting in the same area, but we'll see what happens. Get on some fish. Hopefully, go catch him. It's <laughs> that Louisiana cardio.
small one for a fat ass dude. Sixteen.
call, but I'll figure it out. I knew this freaking fish, Dan. and a quarter. It's our biggest one for the day right there.
fucking brown fish. I found me a brown one. That's gonna call my 15. Eighteen and a quarter. That's the one we needed. That's gonna really help us. Holy crap. That's a three inch call right there. Come on. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Sixteen and three quarter. for today. Jesus is not with me today. He says Jesus was not with him. Jesus was not with the Louisiana boy. He told me I need to be home with Shit. <laughs> we'll see what happens though. Oh, well, she... Alright guys, it is Sunday. It's the day after the tournament. Uh, I had to leave right after the tournament to go to a family party. Um, and I had to drive an hour and a half to Buffalo, so I didn't go get to go to an award ceremony, um, which I picked a bad time to miss an award ceremony because, guys, we won it. We won the tournament. Um, I didn't have any expectation of winning. Um, I had no realization that I even had a chance of winning. Um, I knew I had a good bag for the lake, but I didn't think I had a winning bag. Um, as I told you guys, I don't check standings, you know, with Tourney X, you can kind of get the standings until like the last hour, hour and a half when uh, the tournament trail turns them off so that it's kind of like a suspense type of deal. 
Um, I don't check that throughout the day. It's a, it's a mental thing for me because for me, if I check that standings and I see, you know, I'm being beat by a certain amount or what have you, um, my worry is that, and I've, what I've done in the past when I do check standings is that um, I rush. I start doing, trying to do too many things. I'm trying to force things. I fish too fast. I make mistakes. I make bad decisions. Um, and that's just not good. So for me mentally, to stay positive, to stay fishing clean, to stick to my game plan, I don't check it at all. I go in with my game plan throughout the day and I make the changes I need to based on the fishing. Um, but I take my time doing those. I don't rush. Um, I try to fish clean and stick to what I was going to do. If, if I lose doing that, that's fine. I at least stuck to my game plan. I didn't make the mistakes that I, you know, obviously I've, you're going to make mistakes now and then, whether it's, you know, your backlash something, or maybe you make a bad call, but, um, it's for me to stick to my game plan. Um, so I don't check the standings. Um, and, uh, found out when I was driving to family party that I had won, won by a quarter of an inch, uh, right here. I will put the uh, standings for you guys. Um, so you guys can actually see the results for them. I'll link everything, you know, the tournament results down below. If you really want to go look at them and actually like click on the fish and see everything. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit, a little bit about how I caught these fish, what I was on. Um, and basically my game plan going into the tournament was, uh, being that it's such a small lake. So there was one launch down way at the south end of the lake. There's a launch way at the north end of the lake. And then there was paid parking, um, and launch at a marina that was about mid lake, about a mile and a half from where I wanted to start. Um, and I wanted to more focus on mid lake because I know, um, there's a decent, amount of people anglers that um don't like to move around as much as i do where you know there's days where i'll go 20 miles on the kayak um and there's people that kind of want to stay in a, a small area and i knew not there's being that there's limited parking at that marina spot i decided to go there and focus mid lake because i knew that's probably where the least amount of people are going to be um and that's more opportunity for more fish for you to catch so i went to mid lake um, and basically my idea was I was going to start on the most obvious stuff because I spent time graphing and I found some stuff offshore that was really good. And I kind of figured, you know, if I put the most work in, especially with the, those, you know, with the, the kayak scene, not a lot of people are going to go out there without a rod and just graph. Um, and I decided to do that and found some stuff. So basically what I did is I launched at that marina, uh, went to my first area, and basically my, my strategy was is I want to hit the most obvious stuff um, that I think everyone else is going to see and like, ooh, I'm going to fish there. Uh, or stuff that is really easy to see from a fisherman's eye. So I wanted to start there, made sure I was the first one there, and uh, basically started there, got my limit off of it, um, and I had some stuff that was offshore that I kind of had a feeling, a very good feeling that I'd have to myself. Um, and basically once I had a limit and I kind of soaked it up, more people started piling in on those areas, I left. Um, and I soaked, uh, those piles for until about noon. Um, and I got a decent limit off of it. Um, and basically from there, the bite kind of died. Um, and basically from, from that point until where that bite died, um, this is what I was throwing. And that is the queen tackle finesse football jig. It's a little peanut head. This is a three, eight ounce tungsten, um, tungsten, uh, finesse jig, basically it's finesse football jig. Um, and what I have this on, this is a Daiwa Tatula. I have my whole, all my rod setups and everything. I'll link that right here. Um, uh, but this is a Daiwa Tatula SV. That's a seven, two to one, 12 pound fluorocarbon on this. Um, and this is where the, the factor I want to talk about. This is the Abu Garcia winch. Now this is a composite rod. So for those who know a winch is a composite rod, it's more of a cranking rod. Um, and there was, I don't want to use this rod. Let me just put it out there that way. Um, this actually started out of laziness in practice. It was a, a seven foot, uh, medium, heavy, moderate, fast. Um, and basically laziness in practice. I didn't bring a lot of rods with me in practice. And I was like, well, this is the only rod that somewhat makes sense, you know, spec wise. So um, I slapped the jig on there just to see if I'd get bit. Um, and basically I caught a bunch of fish in practice when I moved around to my different areas and every single fish was pinned, was not coming off. So I knew that hookup, uh, hookup ratio was not going to be a problem. The problem where it lies is that this is a composite rod, so sensitivity is not the main priority here. Um, so if this was a graphite, would have been perfect, absolutely perfect. I would have been to be able to feel a lot more. 
um, there were certain bites I had where they were on for probably two, three seconds before I realized it was actually a fish and not grass, um, which was fine because I could still catch them. It was just kind of the one trade-off. Now, I do have rod, a rod coming in that's specifically for these lighter wire jigs, the more finesse jigs, ones where you can't really throw off a specific football jig because of just, for, at least for me, being afraid to bend out the hook. Um, but yeah, most of my bites came off of that. And this is just, again, this is a queen tackle, uh, tungsten finesse football jig. Got a little rage chunk on the back. That's where all the big fish, I shouldn't say really big fish, but like my 18, a 17, a high 17. Um, I caught a bunch of 16s, uh, off of this. Uh, a lot of my fish came off of that. More than 20 fish throughout the day. But there were some adjustments I did make that I'm going to get to here in a second. Um, that were really crucial to win because I, like again i won by a quarter of an inch so every fish was important um and dummy me actually realized that i had another 16 and a quarter that would have called out a 16 flat uh on the dot to call it out to win by half an inch half of an inch not a quarter of an inch but thankfully things went the way they did so otherwise i'd be really kicking myself uh for that one but let's see so the next adjustment i made when i was when i was on that offshore stuff is certain areas had grass um and basically in practice, I had gotten on a jerkbait bite. Uh, so I'll show you guys here. This is actually the bait I ended up switching to. I got on a jerkbait bite and it was a, um, it was a six cents, um, uh, six cents provoke. I don't know why I was thinking of rearrange. That's jackal. Six cents provoke and it was in violent panda. So it's kind of like a really good uh, overcast. I don't have it with me. I should have had it in this video. Um, it's in the violent panda uh, color. And it's basically like a purple hue on the back with like a neon belly. So great for overcast. Um, but basically that day was slick, calm, a little bit of chop. There's kind of like a little wind gust that would come through, but basically slick, calm. And it was crystal clear, like 16, 17 foot viz. You could see bottom. Um, and basically when I found grass, I decided to switch it up to, this is a mega bass vision 110, Um, and that's that pro blue, very translucent color. And, uh, within a few minutes of switching to that, when that bite died for me offshore, I went to the grass for a little bit, to try some new water and uh caught a 16 and a quarter on that jerk bait um so that was a good switch uh didn't get into a great jerk bait bite i didn't want to force anything new i just wanted to keep running new stuff um but this is a ever garcia veritas plx uh it's a seven foot medium fast uh a shimano corrado dc 12 pound fluorocarbon pretty straightforward um caught a few fish on that and really just, and I, don't, I wanted to keep moving. Like I said, I wanted to keep moving. I wanted to keep making more adjustments to try to maximize my opportunity at running into new fish and to keep culling, keep trying to find that bigger fish, find another 17, find another 18, um, which I, I did find more fish, but and I found some big fish, like 19, 20 inches. Um, but that water was so crystal clear. Um, and I tried to adjust making longer casts in these areas. Unfortunately, didn't land into them, but I did land into fish, uh, which I ended up calling once and caught another 16 and three quarter. Um, and basically all I switched to was I tried to get them on a jig. I caught a couple on a jig, but they were more dinks. And I felt with the scenarios that we were, we were facing um, that it called for a drop shot. Um, this is Berkeley, Berkeley Maxent, flatworm, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, I am extreme believer in the Maxent. I think that everyone's kind of believe, onto that train now. But Abu Garcia, Fantasista, 610 medium light, uh, Daiwa Pro Scion, 2500, 10 pound braid, 8 pound fluorocarbon, Queen Tackle, Tungsten uh, Drop Shot weight, nothing too crazy. And then I have a Gamagatsu, uh, I believe it's a split shot drop shot hook, is what it's called. Um, and basically, I was just trying to make very long casts. I know it's not the greatest rod to make long casts with, being that's a 610. Um, but at the time, it was just like, this is what I got. I didn't bring a lot of gear. Um, and obviously didn't have any issues. You know, I've bombed cast on Lake Erie with this thing and pinned them at a hundred yards and been fine. It's, it's braid to fluorocarbon. That's where that kind of equation comes into. Uh, but basically made a really long cast, caught a lot of fish, um, but it took a bunch of fish. And I was really hoping for one of those big, those big fish, but unfortunately it didn't happen, but I did run into another 16 um, and we called up again. So that was good. We ended up with 85 inches on the dot for the win. And uh, it was good. It was great to kick off the year. A nice thousand dollar check. And uh, that kind of pays for the rest of the entry fees uh, for the NYKBF season for me. So that works. And then uh, basically we got uh, Canandaigua Lake next week. That one's going to be fun. Um, 
Hopefully I'll be able to film that one. My dad's actually going to take my GoPro down to Florida, but I'm going to see if I can, if there's a way I can keep filming this series for you guys. If you guys like this tournament series, uh, let me know and I'll make a much better effort at trying to film that one next weekend. Um, but yeah, we, um, we got it done. Didn't think we we're going to get it done, but uh, set a game plan, stuck to it. And I think uh, it's a great way to kick off this year for me for tournament, tournament wise. Um, made the right decisions, stuck with my decisions, trusted my gut. Um, and beyond that, and trying to fish clean, I lost a few fish at the beginning, but fishing clean for the majority of the time, there's not much more that you could ask for from a tournament perspective. So all was good. Uh, happy with how it, how it turned out, obviously, and hopefully we can keep more wins going down here with the NYKBF trail and some of the different tournaments that we got coming soon. Um, Andy and I are doing a Western New York Bassmaster Trail, and hopefully we can keep that success going there. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, like, please let me know if you do like this tournament series. Uh, we're going to try to make tournament videos for every tournament we do fish. But appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, another great tournament coming up next weekend. Hopefully that all goes well. Got a somewhat of a relative game plan, which I'll go into in the next tournament video. But we're going to see what happens. See you guys next time.